it's good that I got you on the phone and uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you and promoting your virtual signing appearance. Uh, it's I'll, I'll start with that. It's 80s Wrestling Cons virtual signing series. Uh, I have IRS Mike Rotunda on the phone with me. He's going to be doing a signing this Monday. Uh, you, you'll be able to watch it on Facebook Live and you can get some signed photos shout out from the tax man himself so mike how you doing today i'm good i'm good and i'm looking forward to coming up north and uh doing the signing i've done a few of these and um it's fun to interact with the fans and uh still be remembered so yeah uh so i mean it's it's fun because uh i've i've done a few of these with Tommy and like I've worked with him over the years and the last one he did was with Ted. And so right. you have January's like that, that money ink connection. Um, I thought that was really cool. Um, how, like what, what was your, I'll start off with a, you know, a big picture question. What was your favorite memory of working with that team? Because you came in as IRS and it seemed like a, a match, like a perfect match. So, you guys were tag team champions. You main evented WrestleMania together. Like, do you, if you could pick one memory, like, what would it be? What memory or match? Um, I think it was <clears throat> really cool. Um, uh, a big memory working in the um, in the SummerSlam over in Wembley Stadium. You know, at that time and at that period, that was like the biggest house I've ever worked in front of, and. It was just kind of awesome uh, to see the company grow and and be able to do a show like that. And we worked uh, rest of the road warriors there. So unfortunately, we lost the titles. But I, I mean, it was a, a cool place to work. You know, it's such a famous stadium, and all the stuff they've had over the years, and they're all the rock bands and everything. It was a, a and we basically spent like a week over there. So. It was a pretty cool place to go, you know, back in that time. And we were doing a lot of tours in Europe. Uh, back then, Ted and I did, I don't know, probably 16 tours, um, you know, in like a couple of years over there. And they were like three-week tours, not a couple-week tours. They were three-week tours. And it was pretty cool working and, you know, good getting to see uh, all out through Europe. So it was cool. Actually, I started my career in Germany. So, yeah, and it, it it's kind of strange to think like how much travel has changed. Like you just brought up a good point. Like it wasn't just okay, go over and do a show. Like obviously, travels changed, but the wrestling business has really changed quite a bit. And is that something that? Like when you were working for WWE as an agent, is that something that you had to change, like get used to yourself? Or did you feel like you were prepared to, you know, do long distance travel and maybe have some advice for the newer guys coming in that maybe weren't used to working internationally just because you knew like, you know, you, you knew it wasn't just, okay, I go do a show. Like there was a lot of prep involved. There was a lot of, you know, getting used to being on flights and being in different areas. Like, is that something that you could really help somebody out with? Well, it, it's, you can give people advice, but the best way to learn just like anything else is experience. You know, I mean, we did, <laughs> when I was producing, we did a lot of international tours. We went to Korea, to South Africa, to Australia. So basically, you know, like somebody coming up in the ranks, they, they, and that's exciting when you first do that to go and be able to see, you know, so, so many places. I mean, it, you really can't give somebody experience. The best experience is go to your hotel room and don't get in trouble abroad, you know. So it's, it's, it was um, a lot of travel. And but as the company grew too, like when we did international tour, tours, as uh, I was producing, um, we had charter you know, nice charter uh, planes and you do a two week Europe tour, you were basically on the, on a plane every day, or if it was like a three hour bus ride, you know, they had nice buses and they had food on them and everything. So it was, and back in our day, I mean, we just basically 
did mostly uh, bus rides throughout the three weeks. We would go bus, 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 and now the hotels are, are nicer, and they have catering in the hotels back then. You might grab something at catering at the building, and that would be your dinner because you'd be on the bus, you know, for four hours after the show going to the next town. So, you know, it, it's evolved to the point that, you know, the guys are taken care of and the girls are taken care of well. And, you know, as the company grew, things got, you know, bigger and, and uh, we went more places. So it, it was a great experience overall. Yeah, it, it's good to see that, you know, not only you had that experience while you were an in-ring performer, but, you know, you can also see the changes, see that, you know, the, the business has become better, so to speak, as far as accommodations and all that stuff. Um, yeah, for sure. One thing, one thing I wanted to ask about and staying on uh, the money ink topic was, you know, you, I already mentioned that this seemed like a perfect match and it was during an era where like, Ted's gimmick started in the eighties and it was the million dollar man, very flashy Robin Leach. And you came into the company where that, uh, it, it was the new generation and everybody had, you know, like a, a blue collar job, if you want to put it that way. But why do you think that your team specifically was able to, you know, really grab people's attention? And why do you think people still have, you know, such, lasting memories of that because it very it very much was gimmicky but it worked for some reason like you were the ultimate bad guys but for for whatever reason it just you were able to you know transcend above the gimmick and people saw like you guys were really doing some great work in the ring together yeah i mean it's sometimes when you team up with somebody it just clicks you know and it was the same with barry windham and i dusty Rhodes put barry and i together and we did the U.S. Express. And then when I met Ted, um, it was just like a perfect match because the rich guy and the crooked IRS guy. And it was easy to get heat because, first of all, with Ted's persona, you know, being a, a, a rich guy that didn't care about anybody. And then you have a crooked IRS. Nobody likes the IRS to begin with. So <laughs> it was a, a natural heat getter, you know, calling people tax cheats and whatnot. And and like I said, we just click together as a team. Uh, and that happens sometimes, you know, when you <clears throat> get a new partner, you kind of know what the other guy is going to do. And you, it just meshes well. So it was a perfect fit. And it got a lot of heat, you know. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, so it was fun. It was a, a fun time in my career because uh, going in front of people, we were doing our job well if they hate you. So that that's what we were shooting for. So, yeah. And if you look at it on a a more basic or you, you take the the time period out of consideration, there. I mean, looking at you know the political field even now, like people are getting quite upset about taxes. <laughs> so, right, uh, right. Do you feel like? Like, do you feel like that would be some an easy character to still portray today as far as it, keeping it basic, like nobody likes the tax man? Yeah, I think it could work. Um, but sometimes when you try to duplicate something, people don't like that either, you know. So I, I think it is a, a gimmicky type situation that could work this day and age. You'd probably have to tweak it a little bit, but I mean – no one likes paying taxes so <laughs> it's it's a natural heat getter you know yeah. so and the irs can come down on people and and put them through hell you know so it, it still is there's a you're gonna pay you're gonna pay taxes and you're gonna die someday death and taxes that's, there you go nobody beats a, nobody beats either one right yeah, <laughs> nobody beats it yeah <laughs> so um so i mean I, I this is really like where my my wrestling fandom started maybe a year prior to your WWF debut but you came in and IRS you know that's all I knew and then as I got older and then as I talked to different people they were like no 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 this is you know Mike worked for 
Jim Crockett, worked for NWA, WCW, and I learned more about the Varsity Club. And right. we we can get into that a little bit more, but if you didn't get the IRS gimmick, is there like did you have an idea of what you wanted for yourself in WWF or was that something that like Vince or somebody was like, you know what, I want I want you to come in and play IRS? Well, I think it was kind of a spin-off of what I was doing at WCW. Um I started doing the Michael Wall Street coming off the the movie Wall Street and had a character similar, not as IRS, but as kind of a rich guy too. And I didn't re-sign. They offered me an extension on my contract with WCW and I, I didn't sign it. So I contacted WWE and, and went back up there and they kind of came up with the the gimmick with Erwin R. Scheister as IRS. And then it kind of got going and then they teamed Ted and I up and it it took off. So it was more on their part, um, you know, because I knew too, going back there, there was a lot of different characters at the time, you know, it was, that's what the, that era had. And so, they basically came up with it. And then, you know, I had ideas too, once I got started doing it to tweak it and, and, uh, and it just, you know, really took off for me. So I, I kind of felt comfortable doing it. Um, and, and like the varsity club, you mentioned down there, I, I loved doing that too. We had, you know, Dr. Death in there at one time and, and, uh, Steiner and, and Kevin Sullivan and, you know, and that kind of worked really well, too, because it was bragging about your own school being better than any other school in the country. So when you were going to, say, a Baltimore or Newark or wherever, you could knock the colleges there. And that's natural heat, too, you know, because mm-hmm. people obviously like their home teams, you know, and and that was a fun gimmick, too. Yeah. And again, much like the IRS gimmick varsity club, I still feel like could work today. You, you revisited yep. it in WCW in, you know, after you went back there and, uh, I always thought, especially mm-hmm. because he wore the varsity jacket, he, uh, Alex Riley, when he was in WWE, I thought that just that, uh, cockiness bragging, like school bragging rights. Like that's something that, it never goes away. And instead of having a heel going in and just basically being like, Hey, your football team sucks. Like you can build something off of that because college rivalries are so historic. And so just, you know, they, they take on a bigger, you know, a bigger role than just saying, okay, you know, your team stinks. And I think, right. Like, is that some, is that something else you, you think, maybe could work more than well, trying to duplicate IRS? You know, up to the point that um, we did the varsity club, you, you often had, you know, like college athletes that had wrestled or played football or whatever, but they were baby faces. And this was a whole different spin on it, you know, taking it to a heel level where you could actually knock people, you know, from where they lived and their who, what school they backed. So I think it, I think it could work again today if you had the right uh, chemistry with the guys in it, you know, the, that actually had uh, wrestled or, or played football or whatever, you know, if you got the right group together. I mean, I think it could work this day and age. If, if anything, rival, rivalries have gotten bigger, you know, with uh, especially with college football and basketball. And, you know, it's it's huge now with the media coverage where, Back in the day, there was rivalries, but it was more like, um, you know, now you have national rivalries because you got so so big a coverage, you know, like an Alabama playing Florida or, or, you know, Clemson. And it's just huge now because of the, you know, ESPN football and everything like that. It's it's could still work, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would like to see it because before it, it was so regionalized. Like you think of football conferences right. like the Big Ten and the SEC, and now they play each other so much 
on a national level, it'd be very easy to do. And just thinking in terms of the wrestler, like amateur wrestlers becoming professional wrestlers, like another name I could, two names I could think of right away. And they've pr- probably talked trash about it already too. Big E and Dolph Ziggler, collegiate wrestlers, right. like still very proud of their schools. And, you know, if you can build something off of that and, I think fans now more than ever appreciate wrestlers and wrestling gimmicks that are true to life, so to speak. Right. And then, and then you can, you know, it's, it's, you're playing yourself, but turned up to 11. I, I think that is something worth exploring. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think it could be redone for sure. And like I said, if you had the right guys, you know, that, that actually had played sports in college and they have a, a a true link to, to an Iowa or, or a Kent state or whatever, you know, they, and people start bragging about that and calling the other schools, you know, trash. And it, it's a natural heat getter. Now you spend close to 30 years in the ring. You've been work you worked with WWE for the better part of the last decade and unfortunately got let go this year. Uh, I know you did a, uh, an interview with two man power trip of wrestling, which I love their stuff. If you guys I'll, I'll plug them, go check it out. It's good stuff. Um, how are you keeping busy these days? Like, I know you said you did a couple virtual signings and you, you have this one coming up Monday. Like, are you, are you trying to get back into the wrestling business or are you just kind of in, enjoying, you know, spending time at home and kind of. You know, you're, I know you mentioned you're fishing a lot and you're, you're enjoying being a grandpa. So any desire to get back yeah, into it or are you good right now? I, I'm good right now. I, I spent actually about 36 years, you know, in the business between wrestling and producing. And it was getting harder and harder. I'll be 63 in the end of the uh, March coming up. So that was enough, you know, and, and my wife, uh, luckily is a successful, uh, real estate broker down here in Florida. And, uh, so she's busy right now and I'm enjoying being able to go fishing. I went fishing yesterday. So, you know, and I'm, I've actually got quite a few of these signings book, uh, people are calling and, and I guess I'm the new guy on the block. I really haven't done a bunch of them over the years because I was traveling so much, you know, with WWE. So, um, and I have links with Ted, like you said, with Money Inc. And people, I haven't done stuff with Ted or the Varsity Club or Barry Windham, you know, the team teams that I had. And we're getting calls about, you know, uh, bringing us up as that particular group, uh, what, <clears throat> whichever one it may be. Excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, so I'm I'm actually kind of busy at you know, doing these things right now. So, which is a good thing because I'm used to going, um, you know, and, and being busy. So I'm actually keeping pretty busy with this. And then I still have a chance to go do what I want to do or spend time with the family or, you know, be able to go fishing when I want to. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm actually enjoying it. Yeah. That, I, that's really good to hear. And I'm glad you know, you're getting this opportunity because, as you said, you spent years on the road and I, I mean, it, you, you you were kind of in a bubble, so to speak. Like you didn't. Right. A lot of people didn't have access. So now that we can kind of finally talk to you, meet you, get our stuff signed, like it's really cool to, you know, kind of get your perspective on all of these things. And uh, I'll I'll plug the website really quick. It's eighties wrestling Uh, you can buy your photos there. Tune in Monday. It's going to be really fun. They're, they're always really fun. Uh, watching your stuff get signed, hearing from the superstars themselves. Mike will give you a shout out, tell some stories. Um, kind of in summation, a little bit of a big picture question. Uh, how do you want to be remembered in wrestling? Because you worked as Mike Rotunda, you worked as IRS, you've done so much as a wrestler, as an agent. Is there a match or maybe a matches, a moment, 
whether it was by yourself or with Ted or is there anything that really stands out that you really want to highlight who you were as a performer? Well, it, that's hard to say because I really enjoyed um, doing the IRS character. I thought that worked well. And then another one of my favorites was uh, uh, doing the varsity club. And realistically, Barry Windham and I, uh, we came into WWE and and became the uh, tag team champions within a month. I mean, and we had a great run with uh, Sheik and Volkov. And, you know, it, it was fun doing that as well. So it's hard to pick a, a, a time and say that's the best time ever because I enjoyed all three of those. And they were so different, you know, being a baby face when we first went up there with Barry um doing the u.s express and then um i had a chance i left wwe but I, it was kind of good because the first heel character i ever did was in wcw and the nwa actually which became wcw and that's where we started the varsity club so i had a, a good run down there and learned how to uh you know kind of be a heel and then when i came back to uh, WWE and became IRS, you know, I was ready more so than staying there all throughout WWE and trying to switch as a heel. I left, got experiences, you know, as a varsity club healing, and then went back. And I, I thought it helped me to develop the IRS character because of that. Mm -hmm. I asked the question, it originally started as uh, we were going into the pandemic. And I was asking for match recommendations, thinking we're not going to have any new stuff. But now it kind of evolved into just, you know, just kind of seeing what people watch now, whether it's archives or if I'm talking to performers like yourself, like what really resonates. And I, I love hearing the different answers because more often than not, it, it's truly hard to narrow down to one match, one moment, like so I appreciate sharing that. And I'm glad you mentioned the, the U S express, like some people might think, okay, IRS, he came in in the early nineties, but Mike was there in the mid eighties, the U S express, you guys were the tag champions and you're also part of a, a maybe not so well-known trivia question where you guys had real American as your theme song before Hulk right. Hogan. So do, do you get asked that a lot? Like, do you expect maybe that to be one of the questions you hear multiple times on Monday? Yeah, it, it comes up once in a while. Uh, I don't know if everybody was aware of that, but Barry and I were young and dumb and we left. <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's just, and then Hulk ended up getting a song. So it, it's just the way, you know, stuff works out and, Sometimes you're right and making a move and sometimes you're not. We really should have stayed there and kept going, uh, at least for a longer than we did. But it was, you know, like I said, we were young and dumb. So, well, I'll tell you what, you're coming back for 80s Wrestling Con on Monday as IRS. So who knows what would have happened if you stuck around with real American. If you stuck around with the company, maybe we don't get IRS, but right. we're getting uh, the tax man on Monday night. Mike Rotunda is going to be available, signing your stuff, giving shout outs, 80swrestlingcon.com. Mike, thanks very much for your time today. I appreciate it. And I, like I said, I'm looking forward to Monday. So take care. <laughs>